<clears throat> Hello. Hello, everybody. I want to read out of uh, Matthew 14. When Jesus walks on water. But we want to, I want to point out about Peter. Right? So, they feed the 5,000 and they move. And they're going to the other side. But Jesus doesn't go with them. Right? And so it says, uh, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he set, sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up on the mountain by himself and prayed to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was con contrary. Now, on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on, on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Right? So a lot of people say that he stepped out in faith. But the truth is he asked if it was him and he asked to come out. That's faith, right? To trust that God has called you, right? And we, we, do, we just do things. Sometimes we step out of our anointing, right? And he said, come. And when Peter had come out, down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, You, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were with them where in the boat came and worshiped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So, first part I want to talk about is he walked on the water. And then when he began to sink, Jesus caught him. So he didn't get fully emerged in the water. And I had a little message on it that he said the waters won't overflow you. Right? So another issue, one, another thing is that it, it's, a lot of people have issues with prayer, their prayer life. I'm not really all... Big prayer warriors, they say I'm, I'm starting to get more into it. And so this is a, a lesson right here. One of the powerful prayers in the Bible. Lord, help me. Right. Imagine uh, if he would have prayed for an hour, he would have drowned. So it's not how long you pray. It's not it's all these great words you say. Get to the point. Right. God just wants to hear you. And then it says Jesus caught him before he went under. Right. So the water represents the spirit. So he was stepping out into the spirit, but he was tiptoeing on the spirit, right? So we're going to go to um, John 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples of the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed them. He showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana of, in Galilee, the son of Jebedi. Jebedee and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? Right? Have you any food? He knows. He knows he ain't catch nothing. Right? We can't be true fishermen of men without being empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right? And so they were not empowered yet. Right? So this is this is the spiritual side of this. Right? They're out fishing. Right? So this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be fishermen of men, fishermen. Right? And we can't do it. This is what I'm talking about. Like you have to make sure you're being called by God. You got to make sure you're in that anointing. When you're not in that anointing, you're not going to catch nothing. Because you're not empowered by the Holy Spirit. You're outside of your anointing. So Jesus is showing them something. Right? So when Peter walked out, he was walking, tiptoeing on the water. This is what the revelation, this is a revelation God showed me, right? This is a revelation God showed me. And I'm sharing it to you, right? But watch. And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat. Do it the way I say it. Do it. You only supposed to go out fishing for men when I send you. And you're supposed to do it the way I say. It. Right? 
This is what he says. Many are going to come to me saying, Lord, Lord, and I'm going to depart from me. You, for I do not know you, for I do not know you. You practice lawlessness. You did it on your own way. You did it your own way. You didn't listen to anything that I said. You did it for your own glory. You did it by your own understanding. You didn't go in order the way I sent you. You didn't listen to the spirit. You were never sent, right? So, they said to cast a net on the other side of the boat, and you will find some. And you find some. So they cast the net. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw. Able to draw because of the multitude of fish. So now that so now they cast so they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of multitude of the fish so much fish they couldn't draw it in uh, here's another revelation right uh great pastor Car carter cotton said cast the net on the other side use the net another way internet right the internet is dark but if you do it the other way you do it the way god said you could catch many fish and that's why i'm doing this right i'm using the internet, YouTube, to preach the word of God, to be anointed by God, to to catch it, catch people, right, by the power of the Holy Spirit, using the internet another way. Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. See, this is where first he's walking, he steps out, walking on the water. He's tiptoeing on the spirit, right? He's not in the spirit. So here, here he, he dives into the water, right? We need to dive and we need to be fully immersed in the spirit, right? To be empowered by God, right? So there's times where we're tiptoeing on the spirit, but we're not fully immersed, right? That's why Jesus says, you little faith, you're tiptoeing, you're, 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 you're sticking your foot. In the water, like how cold is it? How cold? And now you stay cold. You step your foot, try to, and you ease your way into the water because it's too cold. But it's hot outside. Instead of just diving in, just dive in, man. Fate, boom, just dive in. God's called you, bam, jump in. And this is what God's called us to do. When He's called you, jump in, right? Don't be tiptoeing. Don't be tiptoeing, right? And He plunged into the sea, but the other disciples came in. With the boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish, right? So they're bringing all the people that are called, all the people that they are leading to the Lord, right? Why? Because now they're immersed in the spirit, they're empowered. Now he, they have a whole multitude of fish, whole multitude of people they're bringing to the Lord now because they, they listened, right? Now they're diving in. Now they're fully, fully immersed in the spirit and they're empowered. Now they got a whole multitude of people they're leading to the Lord. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coal there and fish laid out on it and bread, right? The fire of coal, when, when the seraphim put it on Isaiah's lips and his tongue purified him, right? And the bread represents the body and the, the fish represents a... Uh, the bread represents spiritual food and the fish represents physical food, right? So we're being cleansed by the spirit and physical world. So everything that transpires in the spirit manifests in the physical, right? So we're being cleansed and it's coming out of its manifesting, right? So the coal represents the cleansing of the spiritual and physical part of our lives, right? And they're consuming all this, right? All this has been, it's starting to consume them, right? Their whole lives, right? Bring some of the fish which you have caught. And Simon went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken, right? Because it's powered by God, right? Nothing can be breaking that God has ordained, right? And said to them, come and eat breakfast. Right? What did Jesus say? All that the Father gives me, I shall lose none. I cast out none. So the net, bringing the net, right? There was so many fish, it should, the, the net would have broke. Cast out none. We lose none, right? Yet none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord, Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time... Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Raised on the third day, third time he showed them, it was empowered, right? On the third day, the resurrection of the power of the Holy Spirit within us. We all need a resurrection of the Holy Spirit in our lives, 
We need to do it another way. Cast the net. We have to do it on the net another way. We got to do things a different way. Stop doing it our way. Do it the way the Lord said. We got to dive into the spirit. We got to get fully immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. Don't be tiptoeing. Don't be testing the waters with your foot on the edge of the pool. Trying to test how cold the water is. Just don't step down. to Dive into the water. Just don't. We need some some powerful anointings, right? Powerful anointings. You just dive into it, man. You want to get it. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Do it God's way. In the name of Jesus, amen.